let's get some work done here on my laptop. Oh, the resolution on this uh, laptop is not that great. What is that, one pixel? Oh, hinges these days, they just made so cheap. All right, keys just keep getting flatter and flatter, I swear. All right, and that'll be all. We'll submit that and, um, hmm. My laptop seems to have lost its uh, mouse pad. <laughs> Entirely, where to go? Uh, I'm just kidding. I just left my computer at home for leave your computer at home from work day. All right, my friends, I have something spicy today. Well, there's this trend going around right now of de-influencing, where influencers are making content on what products they wouldn't recommend. What gets a lot of hype that they say should actually get no hype. And usually it's lip gloss, but today, it's gonna be about budgeting. Because I saw an article the other day, 101 categories you need to have in your budget to like prevent financial ruin or something dramatic like that. And <clears throat> I clicked on the article and I was thinking this is gonna be ridiculous. But honestly, 101 categories that all made a lot of sense. New tires, school supplies, saving for your anniversary. I was like, okay, yeah, I can get behind this. But I thought, as someone who teaches and empowers people to budget. What are some categories that a lot of people tell you to have that I actually don't recommend? And it's gonna get spicy in here today, folks, because I have two big ones that I guarantee your mama taught you to add to your budget that I'm gonna say you don't need it. The first, it's a little more generic. We make our budgets. We make a category for groceries. You need those. We make a category for gas. Gotta make the car. Beep, beep. You make a category for your mortgage payment and your internet bills. And of course you make a category for savings where you save money. <sighs> but I'm gonna de-influence you from making a savings category in your budget. And here's why. First of all, I, I wanna acknowledge it is a natural human reaction to be making a budget and think, Here's my checking account. I'm gonna put all these dollars into my spending. And here's my savings account. And I'm gonna put all these dollars into a savings category in my budget where it's gonna stay safe and neat and tidy and we're never gonna spend it for whatever reason. But this is my thing. And I've talked about this in the past. What are you saving for? Is the goal of a savings account and a savings category in your budget to just never touch this money and die never having touched this money? No, you're saving it for a reason. There is a purpose. Even if it's retiring in 40 years, that is the purpose. But savings categories are so vague and just like, mysterious. When can I spend that money? When am I allowed to use it? And what is it for? Cause we're saving for things all the time. But that savings category, it's very ominous. Now here's what I would influence you to do instead. Here at YNAB, we have four rules. They have led countless, that hundreds of thousands of people to financial empowerment and feeling like they have control over their money and loving the way they spend their money. Our second rule is to embrace your true expenses. Now, what are true expenses? True expenses are those larger, bigger, less frequent expenses that don't look like a monthly bill. They don't look like a grocery trip or a trip to the gas station. We're not making them often, but they will happen. They're inevitable. Some examples of categories that would be true expenses are car repairs, vacations, boarding for your dog, home repairs. Sometimes we know when they're gonna happen and how much they're gonna cost, like that car insurance premium that only hits every six or 12 months. And sometimes we have actually no idea. I have no idea when I'm gonna get into a fender bender and I have no idea how much it's gonna cost. But I sure as heck wanna be preparing and planning for all of those things as much as I can right now. So at YNAB, we teach you to embrace your true expenses by making categories for each of these different true expenses. If you can throw 30, 50, 100, $200, I don't know what your situation is, throw a little bit of money in there every month so that whenever the fridge finally combusts, I mean, I hope it doesn't combust, you have at least a happy little nest egg to put toward your new fridge, if not all the money you need for it. Now, if I'm, if I'm sounding dramatic, what true expense categories actually are, they're actually mini savings categories with very specific 
jobs. Your car repairs category is a savings category. You are saving for car repairs. Your home maintenance or home repair category is a savings category. You're saving for home repairs. The difference between your one savings category and having multiple specific true expense categories is that you know when you can use these true expense categories and you have no idea when you're allowed to use any money from your savings category. So instead of just saving up a lump sum of money for who knows what, take those savings dollars and give them actual individual jobs. These dollars are gonna be for the down payment on our future home. These dollars are gonna be for when Hannah needs a new car and it's coming. Now, not only do we know when we can spend this money, but we can actually see how close we are to reaching these goals. Having $40,000 in a savings account probably feels amazing, but it doesn't actually tell you what you can do with it. Can you go buy a new car and how much can you spend on that new car? Because what if your roof caves in the next day and you need to fix that? But you just spent $35,000 on a new car because you had $40,000 in savings, but you didn't know what it was for. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So I de-influence the savings category in your budget, and I highly recommend specific individual true expense categories, mini savings categories with specific jobs that do specific things where you know how far your money will take you. The second category, we just deleted it last week. Do not come at me. Hear me out, watch the video all the way through. My husband and I are anticipating some new expenses and our jobs aren't changing. So we were going through our budget, trying to trim down our categories so that we could, you know, garner up some new money to put toward these new expenses. Shave off $50 here, $20 there, see what we can do. We're going down the list and he gets to the emergency fund. He says, now what is this for? And I said, emergencies, babe, can you read? And he said, what emergencies? We're preparing for car expenses. We're preparing for home repairs. We have an HSA. We even have a category called miscellaneous where it's just this buffer we budget for because we know we're gonna forget stuff every month. What is this emergency fund for? And I said, well, obviously, if one of us loses our job, it's like income loss, right? And he said, we don't need this. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because at YNAB, the fourth of our four rules is to age your money. To age your money means you're trying to increase the amount of time between a dollar coming in to your checking account and being spent from that same account. So I would say young money comes into your bank account and you spend it next week. I would say older money that's been aged comes into your bank account and you're not spending those dollars for a month, maybe two maybe more, that would be awesome. And the way we do this at YNAB is by budgeting into the future. Right now, at the time that I'm filming this video, it is April. We have categories for everything we could imagine in our budget. We have targets set for them that we hit every single month. And our entire budget for April is fully funded. But guess what? Our entire budget for the month of May is fully funded. And our entire budget for the month of June is fully funded. So what do we see right there? That is two months of income loss, baby. That is the, the most fantastic emergency fund I could ever possibly imagine. And guess what? We wouldn't need to change a single thing about how we're living our lives right now for two whole months if we lost one of our jobs. Now I understand the desire to have an emergency fund, to have a, a buffer, some kind of nest egg where it's like, this is just money that we could have if we ever need it. But for real y'all, in between all of our true expense categories, which we hardly ever spend from by the way, I mean, we have thousands saved for car repairs and dog boarding and vacations that we never take and really need to finally schedule one because they're infrequent expenses. We save for them every month, but they're not actually happening that often. And the more we save for them, the more money we end up just naturally having because we're budgeting it toward a future need and we're not spending it now. And seriously, there is like not many greater feelings than knowing you have months of your future just ready to go financially. If you are having a hard time deleting the emergency fund. Just ask yourself, what emergency could I possibly anticipate that I haven't already made a budget for in my category? If a tree falls on your roof, that is home repairs. If your car gets sideswiped, that is car repairs. Even if some family emergency happened and we needed to drop everything and head out to a funeral out of state, guess what? We have saved money for travel in our vacation account. It's not quite a vacation, but and we've saved money to board our dog whenever we need to be able to board our dog. So none of those are emergencies. They suck, but they were all anticipated and budgeted for. And y'all, even if 
I did get into a car accident today and I did not have enough money to pay for the repairs that I had saved in my car repairs category. There's no reason I couldn't take the money that we had budgeted for the month of June, which is two whole months away, take some of that and put it toward our emergency in April. Seriously, by aging our money, we have the best emergency fund we could possibly imagine. And that is all I'm gonna say. Spicy topics, but when you think about them, it makes sense. Would love to know your thoughts. Share in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Am I radical? And if you would like to learn more about YNAB's four rules, our method to loving the way you spend your money and having total control of your money, stick around my friends. We have so many YouTube videos, vlogs, Instagram accounts, TikToks, countless help guides on our website, live Q&A workshops with real teachers who know your name after you tell them. Dive in and learn why YNAB has been so impactful for so many people. I don't think you'll regret it. I influence you to check it out and I de-influence you to not. Truly, thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Seriously, share your thoughts, questions, your comments down below. Let's get some conversation going and I'll see you in the next video. Will she ever not be checking her hair? That's the question. Well, this just absolutely looks like a butt. <laughs>